And welcome back to New Region at 120. I am Jeff Cliff. This is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina uh, as part of a Bachelor of Computer Science. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about math again, at kind of a broad and general level. Uh, as kind of described in the numbers video, uh, there's a lot of things that you can use math for. Uh, and I, I kind of went down the list. It wasn't an exhaustive list. Uh, but I, I kind of described in that video how it's, it is, in fact, useful. Uh, in this video, however, I want to take a little bit of a different approach. Uh, in that, uh, I, all throughout high school, uh, it was a, a lot of the, t the math teachers that I had, uh, especially, for example, Mr. Cornuda, uh, seemed to be not really all that interested in teaching math so much as other things. For example, basketball. Uh, and so it wasn't really <coughs> clear uh, whether or not or why we were learning the math that we were learning, except as a means to an end, a means to get into university, a hoop to jump through so that we can get to the next stage in our life, uh, a, a kind of distraction from the things that could be viewed as more important, like music uh, or maybe history or something like that. And so uh, it was. It seemed to be that, you know, why would we even care about that? You know, yes, you can do things with math, you can solve problems, you can find x, right? And x is, you know, something and some equation. And uh, you know, a lot of people have told me after they've graduated high school that they just didn't really use math again. And it was pointless to learn trigonometry, for example, because why would you ever need to know sine of x uh, for some x? Uh, and why would you ever, you know, possibly need to know that? So why would you even learn it in the first place if you'd never find it useful? And the to some extent, the problem there is uh, that the teachers, again, are, are not connecting the solutions to your problems to things that you would actually care about. So, for example, they're not teaching you to ask, can you use the results, and then showing you how, uh, in your life, the results from the things that you're learning are actually relevant. Um, part of that is, uh, again, because of the kind of standard template of mathematics that's taught in Saskatchewan. Um, it's you know, very detached from the day-to-day -day experience uh, and from the short term all the way to the long term of most high school students. But even ignoring all that, ignore the, you know, the, the inability of the, the, the teachers to get through to the kids, uh, there, there's kind of a fundamental problem in that frame of reference. Because the perspective there is that the student should not have to be kind of taught or, or should not have to use the math on their own, it's so much you know, the, the teacher's responsibility to show them how to do it, and then you know they're they're just this kind of passive learner, uh, as you would imagine would be completely not the case after watching the pragmatism video. Uh, but the, the the point here is that if you're a student and you're learning math, you have something that you can do now, and you have a tool that you can use to approach the world. Uh, and if you choose not to use that tool, then yes, you know, we can blame the people who gave you that tool for not showing you how to use it properly to some extent. But at the end of the day, it's your fault that you're not using that tool. It's your responsibility that when you see a nail and you have a hammer in your back pocket, that you don't use your hand to ham, you know, hammer in the nail. You take the hammer out of your pocket and you hit the nail, right? You've got a tool that you can use. Use it. If you have math, take that math, sharpen it, and then you know, cut things with it. Or mm -hmm. if you've got math and it, you know, can be used to hit nails uh, in, in some kind of a frame of reference, then hit those nails, right? The, the world runs on something that math can talk to. And so you can use that math to talk to it. You can in, to work with the rest of the world, especially now that you have access to computers. Uh, and practically everything on computers has, you know, is only one or two steps away from math in some way, shape, or form. But, you know, if you're not finding math useful, you, that's your problem, your fault for not using the math enough to make it useful for you. Uh, I really, really mean that. You want to go out and if you aren't using math every single day, you should actually start thinking about why you're not using that math every day. And where in your life could you get data with which you could apply the math that you know? Is there perhaps some electronics that you could be uh, uh, surrounding yourself with? Is there some kind of uh, observations that you could be making? Is there some kind of thing that you care enough about to get data about so that you can start to make changes in your life? 
These are the kinds of questions that you can be asking. Again, if you don't know how to do the math, that's, you know, obviously you can't use math that you don't have. Uh, and if you don't know how to apply the math that you do have, maybe again there's a problem in your skill with that math in order to, you know, get to the point where you can have it sharp enough that you can actually cut things that aren't just toy problems. Uh, again, but at the end of the day, once you start having the same math that other people have used to great success, you know, if you get to the point where you've actually learned in a university level calculus, you've got everything that they needed to found the industrial revolution, right? You've got enough to, you, to solve real problems in the world. And so go look for problems and start solving them. If you're a little out of shape, you know, it's just like going for a run, right? If you uh, are out of shape and you haven't gone for a run for a while, go out and go for a walk, you know? You, every step that you take uh, puts you one step up further than the couch potato who's sitting on the couch. Same thing with math. Every step, every problem that you solve, and every problem that you not only just solve, but look for uh, connections with other problems and help, you know, show other people how you do it, uh, puts you one problem ahead of the couch potato who's just looking at pictures of cats on the internet. So, again, this is, math is not useless. It is a very useful thing, and if you are finding it useless, that is your fault as a reasoner, as a person who is not using your brain to the, its full capacity, you, who is not using your humanity to its full capacity. We have these tools, these intellectual aids that allow us to build things that are more complicated than the things that we can build with our bare hands. We have tools, we have institutions, but we have more than either of those. We have math. Math is what gives us power to change the conditions of our life. Use it. If you have any questions of, uh, or problems that you're uh, running into in applying the math that you understand to your day-to-day -day life, feel free to ask anywhere where this video is posted. Uh, as usual, uh, there should be a Bitcoin donation at the bottom here, which, uh, again, the Bitcoin donation or the Bitcoin network has all sorts of math that you can do to it and learn about um, if you're curious. Uh, and as usual, uh, we will see you next video.